Hi there, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number two for chapter eight, and the topic is Fourier series. In the previous video, we talked about periodic functions, and uh, we talked about a typical example for that, which is the trig set, that is, the functions of sine and cosine. And then we introduced the concept of inner product and used that to define that two functions are orthogonal to each other. And we show that the trig set is um, orthogonal to each other, all the functions there. Okay, so with that in mind, we can uh, begin our study on Fourier series. Okay, we'll go through the definition. So the objective of a Fourier series is to represent a periodic function as a series of sine and cosine functions. Okay, so here's the definition. Let now fx be a periodic function with period 2L. And then the Fourier series for f is the following. fx equal to sum a0 over 2 plus a summation for m from 1 to infinity of this cosine function with m here multiplied by coefficient a m plus a sine function with m here multiplied by a coefficient b m. And here m runs from 1 to infinity, so this summation here is an infinite series. These coefficients, they are um, constants, not um, necessarily positive. Um, we have a naught and a m and b m for all uh, m's. They are called Fourier coefficients. Okay, so there are several um, big questions one needs to ask. And the very first one would be, if a function f is given, how do we compute the Fourier coefficients? Well, um, one important feature of the um, trig set here is the orthogonality, and that's exactly what we'll use to derive and, and the formulas for all these coefficients, okay, the a m, b m, and the constant term a naught. And now before um, we continue, I would like to emphasize on this uh, special form of the constant term. The constant term is written as a naught over 2. Okay, so um, it's half of the coefficient a naught. There are some textbooks um, that would call this constant itself as a naught. Then that a naught will be different from our a naught. Okay, then our a naught divided by 2 will be the other a naught. Okay, so just a side note. Okay, now let's um, derive a formula to compute these Fourier coefficients. Let's um, take an example on how to find an expression of all these coefficients a, m's. Um, this is the form of Fourier series that we wish to find, and let's call this star. Now we multiply this equation star on both sides by cosine m pi x over l for some in number n and we integrate over the interval from negative l to l so what effectively that's been done is that you basically take in a product with this cosine function on both the left hand side and right hand side okay. so now the left hand side will be this integral which is just the inner product, f times this cosine function, integrated. And the right-hand side, we make the assumption that um, if the series converges, then the integral of the series will equal to the integral of each term and then add up. Okay, So we um, integrate each term. So take this term here, multiply by that cosine function and integrate. And then here we actually have two summations, one for the term of cosine function and one for the sine function, and we write them out into two summations. So for the cosine, you're summing over a m. Now 
am is in front of this cosine function and it's multiplied by the other cosine function. Since this is a constant, we move it outside the integ integration sign. Okay, so now we integrate these two cosine functions times am and sum up. And the same happens for this uh, um, sine function. We have the sine times the cosine, and then we move the bn outside, and then we sum over. So you might have noticed that I marked certain terms in red. The reason for that coloring is that all the terms in red, they're all zero. Um, you can record just the orthogonality. So this is in a product of the function 1 with cosine and pi t. And they are orthogonal, so this integral is just 0. And the same thing happens for here. Any, all of these sine functions and cosine functions are orthogonal to each other. Here we are just taking an inner product. Therefore, that term is 0, and you add all of them up, it's 0. And then um, the remaining um, summation term here, we see that we are simply just taking in a product of these two. And let's look at these two here. And we know that these cosine functions are orthogonal to each other. That is, this inner product is 0, except for the case when n equals m. In that case, it's not 0. Okay. So in this summation here, all terms are 0 except for one term where m equals n. Okay. Therefore, this summation will equal to just one term, that is with the in index n term here, and then you have the inner product of cosine m pi x with itself. And then uh, recall the previous video, we worked out this integral, and this is um, just L, so we'll have a n times L. So all that calculation showed us that the left hand side here equals to all this right hand side end up just to one number that is a n times L. Okay, let's summarize that here as the the result of the previous page. We have that. So what does that tell us? Well, the function fx is given. And then cosine, this is a given function, right? And the L is the, the interval, which is given. And the AN is the Fourier coefficient for the um, cosine function. So we see that this ex effectively actually give us a formula to compute the AN. OK, so keep AN on the left-hand side and move the term L to the other side. Then we get 1 over L the integral of that. You can also recognize this as the inner product between f and this cosine function. Okay, And this holds for any index n, n from 1 to 3. All right, so once this is understood, one can easily um, imagine um, carrying this out in a totally similar way to compute the coefficient bn. So instead of multiply both sides with this cosine function, we can do with the sine function. And going through the derivations in the same way, we'll end up with this expression for the bn, which is 1 over n of the inner product between f and the sine function for all the n's of 1 to 3. And finally, the constant term an um, you can just um, multiply the equation star with constant 1 and then integrate. And take that means taking the inner product. That means all the sine cosine functions will be gone. And then you quickly get the expression for a n, which is 1 over L integral fx times 1, which we can drop from negative L to L. OK, um, two little remarks I would like to make. First is that the term a0 over 2, which is the constant term in the Fourier series. If you look at a0 over 2, um, then you, you will get 1 over 2 times L 
of that function over an integral of length to L. This effectively gives you the average of the function f over a period. Okay, so the that term actually gives you the constant term. And then second comment is that our, uh, why we write a naught over two as the constant term. You see that if one does that, then this a naught here, comparing its expression for a n, you see that a naught can be obtained by the same formula as a n, and when you set n equals zero. When n is zero, cosine of zero is one, and this formula reduces to that one. Now let's summarize our formulas. Let now f be a periodic function with period 2L, and uh, we want to express this as a series in this form. Then the coefficient a n can be computed with this formula. Here n equals 1, a 0, 1, 2, 3. So we put the 0 here, and then we write this a naught over 2. And then the b n can be computed by working out this integral, where n is 1, 2, 3, and so on. And finally, a little remark. Um, if the function has period 2 pi, that is L equals pi, then you see this, um, this term pi over L will be just 1. You get 1 here, pi over L will be 1, pi over L will be 1. And the formula is a little bit simpler, okay? So let's repeat it. So a n will be this formula by changing L into pi, and then drop the factor pi over L, which is 1 here, okay, for a n. And for b n, we do the same thing, change the L into pi, and this is n x. Okay, so... Um, and this last page here in summarizes our derivation. And uh, in next video, we will go through um, examples of finding Fourier series. As you can imagine, the main part of the work is to carry out these integrals, carry out the function multiplied by sine and cosine, and then work out the integrals. It can get messy, okay? but. Uh, We'll see. So that's all I have for today, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.